Welcome back to Deceased, right here at Comic Storian. My name is Benny and I'll be your narrator for today. Deceased Hope at World's End is a digital series that comes out every other week and tells you short stories that have happened within the Deceased universe. We've already covered what happened to Black Adam and what happened to Wally West. Today, we're going to bring you Chapter 4 of this series of short stories in the Deceased universe. The Airy flew forward with Wink in their arms towards the towering fortress that was Jotunheim. They had been flying for three days, yet they couldn't stop. Far below them, the dead continued to spread. Wink knows that they need to rest, but Airy knows that they can't stop. And finally, they reach their destination. It was safe. It was heavily defended. The villains known as Manticore and Raza Kuta ordered their soldiers to open fire. The bullets, they fill the air, but Wink pops out of existence in a puff of smoke, taking Aerie with her. What? Manticore snarls. When suddenly the pair appear behind the soldiers with Manticore and Raza Kuta moving to defend their fortress. Wait, please! Wink shouts, holding up her hand, and Aerie sags in Wink's arms, exhausted from their flight. We've traveled for days. We only want shelter. We can help you, they explain. Anger fills Wink's eyes as she explains that if she wanted to, she could teleport them all away to smash on the rocks far below. But meanwhile, in other parts of the world, the heroes gather at the Fortress of Solitude. Wonder Woman returns with more survivors while Damien stares at the uniform that his father left him. John walks into the room, letting Damien know that Wonder Woman arrived with more survivors in her invisible jet. Is the jet still there? Damien asks. Uh, hard to tell. It's invisible, John responds. He looks down at the case in Damien's hands, asking if he's going to change out of his Robin costume, and the young boy looks down, telling his friend that he doesn't think that he's ready. I get it, really. This symbol doesn't exactly come free of burden, you know? John tells him. At Jotunheim, Manticore pulls back the curtain where Wink and Eri are resting. You said you would help. It is time to do so, Manticore tells them. Wink tries to argue, telling them that Airy has flown for three days straight, but the winged being pulls themselves to their feet, telling Wink that it is okay. Two of our members, Nightshade and Hive, were sent to scout to the west. They have not returned, Manticore tells them. Airy nods, telling him that they will search for them, and the two quickly leave the fortress. There's a knock at the door, and Superman enters the room, bringing a pot of tea for Alfred. And the butler is shocked. Thank you. I'm not used to people waiting on me, Master Kent, Alfred tells the Man of Steel. But Superman waves him off, telling him that there are no masters in the Fortress of Solitude. He asks if he can have a word with Damien alone, and Alfred agrees. So Superman sits down before the young Robin, looking at the case, telling Damien that Bruce believed that he deserved this. And your father was almost always right. Almost irritatingly so, Damien, Superman tells him. Bruce was not always right. Damien huffs. Of course not. When you're young, your father's rarely ever right. But when we get older, we realize that they were just protecting us. Damien turns his back. I liked your dad. He was old school. Jonathan Kent was as genuine as he seemed, wasn't he? Are you all right? Damien asks the Man of Steel. Superman pauses, smiling at the young man, telling him he was a good person. I'm guessing it's not the actual symbol of the bat that scares you, is it, Damien? Superman asks, and Damien nods his head, admitting that he feels that if he puts on the uniform, his father, Bruce Wayne, will really be gone. Superman puts his hand on the young boy's shoulder. Bruce became a hero because he lost the people that he loved. He fought every day so that that wouldn't happen to the others. The world needs that now more than ever. I believe this world needs you, Batman. Alfred finishes putting on the new bat suit. The cow doesn't feel right, Damien tells him. It will. Alfred responds without a thought. Do I look stupid? And Alfred tells him, no. And he steps back, admiring his young charge. You look like your father. He smiles. The world has its Batman again. But meanwhile, over in the mountains, Airy flies back, grabbing Wink and flying as fast as they can back towards Jotunheim. We have to go! We have to warn Jotunheim! Airy screams. An hour after Black Adam was infected, all of Conduct was also infected, and now death is spreading, and an army is coming. 
And that concludes chapter four of the short story series that is Hope at World's End. It looks like it's all going to come together as if all these short stories are all going to link together for one massive finale. I don't know. No one really knows what this series is as there is an official sequel to Deceased, Deceased 2, coming out very soon. So I hope you guys are enjoying these little tidbits in the Deceased universe. And I hope you guys consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that like button. I'll see you next time right here.